All right, give me. Good afternoon, everyone. This would go much better if my uh, mouse decided to not stop working or to stop working. There we go. This is great, right? <laughs> right as the recording started. But hey, how's it going? Welcome. Welcome to um, Quick Pick opening day. Hopefully you can now see the PowerPoint. And if you can't Absolutely. pop it in the chat or the Q&A, all right, awesome. Um, I'm going to give you a few tips as far as you know, it, it, like Sharon already said, you know, things to look out for, stuff you might want to, you know, verify before going live. Definitely share also what you are doing, because what I recommend, there's there's probably much more that you do, and we can all learn from that. So what are we going to talk about today? Let's see. Um, we're going to go over just a basic course checklist, right? We should have one of these already, or at least a general idea before opening, um, you know, general, I, I tend to call it, you know, regular ACE web registration, right? So when we're putting our courses together, what are we verifying? We're going to look at some quick pick settings, and we're also going to look at some of our ACE web settings. So lots of things. We've got the, you know, trifecta here of, of what we need to watch out for. So then from here, the most important thing that you can do ever, ever, ever before preparing, and this is not just for quick pick, quick pick, but especially quick pick, is to test absolutely everything. So when I talk about testing, I don't mean like, oh, the course is display, cool. Or, you know, or uh, I already have a membership, so let me see what it looks like for me. When we talk about testing before opening quick pick, running through every possible scenario, um, you know, testing as somebody who has never come in as a member before, testing as someone with an expired membership, uh, you know, a current membership, maybe one that is expiring at some point during the next term, because you really want to make sure that everything is configured just right for each person, okay? So the big three with this, all right, we're gonna talk about each of these individually, but the, and, and you've probably heard me, if I'm your tech or your tech or everyone here at ASWR talk about something called a debug flag for logging routines. We wanna always make sure that that's set to the least amount. There's an extended logging uh, item in the quick pick INI that we wanna make sure is off. And again, test everything. I am going to sound like a broken record the entire time telling you to test things. So when we're talking about a course checklist, I do want to kind of separate memberships and individual courses just a little bit. So when you're setting up your membership courses, you know, is your course a membership type? That's a really easy thing to overlook. I do it all the time. Is it active? Is it open for enrollment? Remember when we're dealing with uh, membership courses, there is that enrollment open date in the, the middle section, and it needs to be a date that's either you know today or before today. Or if you plan on testing July 1st, you really want that open date to be at least July 1st. If not, it will not display. Is it set to publish register over on your ACE web info tab? If it's set to no publish, it won't show up, okay? Does your membership course have a fee assigned with a corresponding membership code that expires sometime in the future? That's a very long run on sentence. What do I mean by that? One, we have to have a fee on the course, okay? With um, Quick Pick membership courses, only one fee is going to be available. We wanna make sure that that fee is active. Uh, as far as our membership expiration, is it going to expire on a date? Is it going to expire, you know, within 300, you know, a year, like mine is set up days 365. And then of course, what member code are we, are we giving people who enroll in this membership? So we need to make sure all of that is there for us. And although this is optional, always a good thing to check if you're offering a coupon, right? Then let's make sure that that is assigned to the membership course. Also, in, so any questions about just basic membership things to check before talking a little more about individual courses? So again, these are your very, very basic things, right? Is it a membership type? Is it active? Is it set to publish? Is it set to be open? Do we have fees? Yes? 
when all of that is good, we can pass go and then look at individual courses, do your courses. And this is like, again, bare minimum. Are there dates on your courses? Do you have a begin date? Do you have an end date? Are those actually date values? Sometimes if we click in there and just start typing, you may find a date that says something like 0108200020 you know, or something. That's, we wanna make sure that our dates look good. Do we have times? Your courses should have times. Are there descriptions? This is one of those, you, you probably, you, you may not want a description, okay, but you, you, you might, and you probably should have one. Because of course, one of the features with Quick Pick is being able to, you know, hold your mouse over the title, which I'll show you. We're going to go live with that as well to actually see what the course is about. Are there fees on your courses? You can have multiple fees if that's what you want to do. However, if you are offering a coupon, you cannot offer on individual courses. That coupon is only available for the membership course. Are your courses set to publish register? It's a little hard to test if they aren't, right? The biggest, biggest, biggest deal is do your courses have grouping codes, okay? Those are the ones down in the bottom right. These grouping codes determine this, this they, the, y'all, words on a Thursday is not fun. Quick pick is laid out based on grouping codes. That's that's how your courses are, are grouped online when we're looking at our quick pick page, right? So you can see courses, hybrid, languages, art and culture, whatever, those are all grouping codes, okay? So for example, that ProACE grouping code, that is going to, if you have ProACE assigned to your course as a grouping code, that's where it's gonna show up on the page. So we, we need to make sure that grouping codes are assigned. If your course isn't showing up online and while it's active and it's set to publish register, chances are really good the issue is that the grouping code is not there. So once you've gone through your course checklist, let's start testing everything again, right? Testing it online. Any questions, anything else on courses that you think I overlooked that is really important to, to be verified before we start looking at other configuration things? There is a question while people are thinking yeah. on that. Um, well, somebody wants to know, can you have multiple fees for yes. the membership course? For the membership course, no. And are hybrid courses supported? They right are supported, yes, yes, yes. And I am also gonna, well, you've got the list of questions, so I don't need to write it down, Sharon, so I can go back and verify if uh, anything, but yeah, it's just one fee for memberships and hybrid is absolutely supported. I'm gonna show you an example of that. Anything else? What else we got? I'm not seeing anything else. Okay. So now we're gonna talk, we've you know reviewed our courses. Let's talk about our quick pick settings. There are a lot of files, right? There are a lot of things that we need to sort of know. We need to know they exist. Some of them, once you've set them up once, you, you don't really need to do much more with them. Um, others, we are in constantly making changes. So the most important one that really configures your layout, you know, what requirements are gonna be there, if there are, you know, multiple fees, right? is your quick pick boxes text. We're also going to look at the INI consent if you're doing a waiver. If you're not, you might think, hey, this is cool. And then of course your main template. So quick pick boxes text. There are a lot of different items that you can put in here. I'm going to show you my working copy and we're going to kind of mess with it a little bit so you can see what what changes, you know, what where, right? Which changes what? I don't know. So the big important items though, right, are your course ID because that is your course code. So this is something that you're changing every time you're opening registration, right? You're always needing, you need to make sure your course ID is there. And the other thing is your member code, which is just mem code on the, uh, in the file. So if you, if you have your course set to, you know, open for enrollment and it's set for publish register and you're still not seeing it, you'll want to come in here and make sure that you've updated your course ID in that quick pick boxes.txt file. Those are the big deals. 
Other things that are important, uh, if you're offering a coupon code, if you have uh, membership courses that you only want to display to people who have met some other requirement, so there's a show if, if you have a prerequisite for a membership, and I think we have at least one or two uh, schools doing that, so there's that item to worry about, and hide from. Maybe, you know, you offer a term and an annual, and if people have an annual membership, you, you just want to hide the term one from them, you can do that, okay? So what I'm going to do at this point is actually just cut over two quick pick boxes. So you're probably all very familiar with this. It's so much fun. There are so many things that you can do in here. Uh, so, right, so course ID, membership code, those are the big deals. On this one, I'm offering a coupon code. My next example down, again, it's a membership. I've got my course code, got the membership code. I'm offering coupons everywhere. We're just throwing discounts to everyone. And then this would be an example of if I want to show, I only want to show this course if, okay, not registered is another item. I only want this one to show up if someone's not enrolled in it already, right? So if somebody already has this, you know, member 23-2 uh, SD uh, membership course, I just don't even want it to display on the page to them. They don't need to see it, right? There are also memberships some of you might have where it's actually a, a supplement where maybe you purchase an annual one, but if you purchase this one-off term membership as well, you can get an even bigger discount. So you can have a supplemental. So if you are offering that, you want to make sure that this is configured so it, it works that way. And of course, we want to make sure that there's a prerequisite of that other membership. So these are the, the, the big items that we want to look out for. Any questions on this? Things are looking good. Cool. All right. There is, um, <laughs> I will say this is an ever, ever evolving uh, product that we offer. So there's quite a bit of information that we have to keep track of. And some of you may be looking at this going, I had no idea that show if was a thing or, you know, what's this member prereq? And I will tell you, for those of you in attendance today, we have documentation and it's not, we, we don't have it uh, public because this is of course an optional module and we, we wanna keep that, you know, available for folks who have, who have purchased it. But I have gone through cleaned up some of our documentation. If you are interested in, in knowing what are all of the settings I can use in quick pick boxes, I do have that available and, and you know, ask me, ask your tech and we can get it to you. Just understand with that, of course, is it, this is changing constantly. We are adding new things on, but if, if you'd like to see the full list, we've, we've got that for you. Same with the INI settings that we're gonna talk about. Yay, I hope someone at least is cheering. There is quite a bit of uh, information in it. So, okay, back over to our slideshow. So we have our memberships in quick pick boxes, and then we also have our groups. Groups, grouping codes, what? We have to have a grouping code on a course, this is why. The big, big items in here are of course the group. This is your grouping code. So whatever is on your course, going to go find it. Of course, it's on the wrong screen. Hang on one sec for me. So in this example, Pro Ace, right? That's what we're looking at here. So you want to have your grouping code. You also want your member flag. What this means is our member is, is a membership required for courses in this group. Some some folks offer courses that you don't necessarily have to be a member to take. And so in this example that you're seeing that none means that anyone could come in and enroll in courses that are that have that pro ace grouping code. So you want to make sure that you have a grouping code there that, you know, what are you expecting to see and also whether a membership is required. And of course, multiple memberships are absolutely a thing. You know, if you're uh, a member of this membership or if you have this one or that one, 
you know, any, any of those members, you just put all of those member codes in there separated by commas. And then any of those members can select courses from that group. Other things, fee count. So again, you can have multiple fees for a course. And so you do have to set how many you want displayed in ACEweb whether it's user selectable. So you may want folks, you know, I wanna show four fees and, you know, registrants can choose which one they want. Uh, you can set that to yes or no. Whether there's a limit, maybe you want to allow members to only take, let's say four courses from the pro ACE group, right? You know, it, it, if you have a ton of people enrolling and everything and you wanna try to you know, make sure everybody gets a chance, you might be limiting things. You can also limit hours. So if you have hours on your course and, you know, members can only take 12 hours from this group, you can actually set that. And you can even change the course order, All right? So looking at some examples here, and the, um, this hybrid group, okay, I've got a, my grouping code. These are my hybrid courses. Can you have hybrid courses, Lindsay? Yes, you can. I created a whole grouping code just for those. And it, it's gonna display four fees if there are four fees on the course. And you'll notice my member flag, membership codes that are required. I've got three different ones in here. So anyone who has OLLI 22F term or OLLI mem can enroll in those courses. You can set the column display. If you're if you have a bunch of courses, you you may want more than one column. And although there are four fees, the user cannot select them. So, but what does that look like? Well, on the quick pick page, hybrid courses, I just have one course in here. You'll notice there are four fees here. Okay, well, there were four. There we go. So the idea here is a, a member would be able to register for in-person, right? Or Zoom, or in this case, there's an unlimited. If you purchased a different membership, it would be there. So in theory, you would probably want this to be user selectable so I can decide which one I want. Do I want Zoom? How, how's it gonna know? It's just gonna drop me in the cheapest one if I can't choose anything. So let's see what happens when I sign in. And I sign in, it's spinning. Sometimes it's a, it takes a little while. So we'll just give that, there we go. So under hybrid courses, you'll notice that once I selected it, it became available for registration, but in-person and Zoom were the only ones that I was able to see probably because I have a membership code set over somewhere that it's not uh, allowing me to actually do it. So. Can we have hybrid courses? Yes. What if my hybrid courses has a different price for you know in-person versus virtual, which it, it, it probably would, but also we just need to know which one you're choosing to register for. Those are all there for you. Let's see. Um, one thing I did wanna show you is that you can, if you need to add a message, you really want something else in your, in your group, so you'll notice this optional fees. You can add some extra text under that if, uh, if you need to. That's something you can add if you're interested. And back down to my pro ACE grouping code, notice that I have two columns set up here so that it's just a little easier to see. Anyone else using something that I haven't pointed out? No? If they are there, they haven't shared yet. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we will next talk about um, the INI setting. We're gonna uh, end up finished. Mm -hmm. A question just came up, Lindsay. Yeah. Can, Lindsay, can you do this without membership codes? Yeah, absolutely, yes. So without membership codes, I've got this pro ACE example here. Notice this member flag setting, right? This determines whether it's going to enforce the membership. It is set to none. So that means that no membership is required. So if I don't have a membership 
And you'll notice with mine, there's going to be all sorts of messages here, there, and everywhere. So I can still enroll in, in any of these courses, whether I have a membership or not. So yes, and actually, I'm not sure who asked that, but I think UTEP, Maxie, you, um, you set yours up without memberships. We talked about a participation form for yours, correct? Wait, Maxie's not here, but there is a UTEP, or is Maxie with us? Max is anyway. here. Max is okay, here. yes. <laughs> so all this is to say is, yeah, you can, yeah, no membership is required. You absolutely don't have to require a membership. Look at this. I even pulled up some examples already. Aren't you, aren't y'all proud of me for being prepared? Yes. Great. Awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> there's mine. Okay. Any other questions? Not at this time. Not at this time. Okay. So then let's talk about the next big deal. Uh, you know, quick pick boxes, it's, it's there, it's a lot. Next is your quick pick dot I and I. It says quick pick boxes and that's my fault. I tried to get examples up, but I didn't proofread well enough. Everything always has its, its trade off. So quick pick dot I and I, those are your, your configuration settings. Those are uh, like your ACE web I and I settings or your ACE web preferences. These are your quick pick preferences. This is, this is where the, the rest of the magic happens, okay? So if you're offering um, donation courses, we need to know what those codes are. This is where your, your membership codes are actually set. So some of the key items there that we're gonna talk about are extended logging. We're gonna get into that a little bit more after this part. Your membership codes. Again, this is, you know, these are the memberships that, that Quick pick is going to be looking for when, when trying to enforce something. So if you've created a whole new membership code, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a new pilot membership you're offering, whatever, it has a new member code, you need to make sure that you update your, your quick pick dot INI file with that code. Membership codes is here. You'll notice I have three of them. Also, as long as I'm here and you're seeing this, how some of this is in green. This is just commented out. Uh, all that means is it could be something that you're, you know, you've you've got a message somewhere to remind yourself of something, or you had some old settings that you want to hang on to, but you're not using them. That's what that is. But yes, membership codes are configured in QuickPick.ini. Again, if there's a donation, these two cutoff reg date and last reg date. I personally think that these are the two. Um, most contentious <laughs> I and I settings. These these work together, okay? So so the idea behind these and and really I think what when it when it comes to things being not quite right and maybe a member can enroll but a non-member can't or an expired member can but a current one can't. It's because we're dealing with these last reg and cutoff reg dates. They they work to do things like. Once I've logged on, if if my membership extends through whatever the cutoff is, then it's not going to worry about it. Um, last reg is the end of the term. So basically, if my membership extends, it's not going to worry about it. OK, but if there is another date in there, it's 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 just going to force. Making sure that current members are the only ones who can enroll. OK. And then the other one would be allow proxy. So if you're allowing proxy registrations in QuickPick, you do have to turn that on, just like you have to turn that on in AceWeb if you're offering uh, proxy registration over there as well. So let's look at a couple of these. Again, your membership codes. Donation course, there is also a donation options. You might want to offer more than one donation. Uh, you would just actually change that option number to whatever it is you need. Um, one thing, one question that came up recently, <clears throat> as long as we're looking at the donation setting, is, you know, the, the donations for Quick Pick, the way it was initially configured was just a, here's our donation course, enter whatever it is you want to donate, right? Just pick an amount, no amount is too small, enter the value in there. But what if you have very specific donation amounts? You can still have those courses. You just actually would want to set them up in your quick pick boxes as, as their own group. So that if you had a 
donation with, you know, gold level fee and silver level fee, you could make it so that folks can actually choose which fee, you know, which, which amount they're going to donate rather than just enter, you know, whatever value they want. So looking through to figure out which ones might also be important. I know which one's important. It's the one we're going to talk about next, extended logging. Extended logging, extended logging. You will notice that that one is in all caps at the very top. I'm just going to keep zooming in on it. That, that is a, a, a big, big deal one. AceWeb, and we're going to talk about that debug flag for AceWeb and what it logs. This quick pick extended logging is basically logging <laughs> every single thing that quick pick is doing in the background. And it's writing all of it to a file in your, your ACE web folder on the server. And that takes time. Like if you were sitting here having to, you know, copy verbatim every word I'm saying, that would take a lot of time. And when that happens, it slows down what's going on on the page. It slows down you know, folks ability to, it, it, it slows down how long it takes for the page to load. Uh, so this is something that we always want to turn off. And really you can keep this off unless your tech asks you to turn it on because it does really, really inflate the, the debug log. And it's, it's intended to, to be a tool to track down a problem. It doesn't have to be on all the time. So Quick pick, we open registration Monday. Make sure this is turned off Friday before you go home. The other thing that's in here is deferred fill. And I'm curious if anyone is using this. Is anyone using the deferred fill? Let's see a show of hands if you are using that deferred fill she's talking about. I'll look for hands here, Lindsay. Seeing none. Ah, what is a deferred fill? What what is that's a great purpose? question. <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. No, deferred <laughs> fill. Uh, <laughs> what what this does is so on our quick pick page, right? And we'll stick with this pro ace group. There are a lot of courses, right? And well, there aren't any. There aren't too many in these, but. Let's say you have, you know, a hundred courses out here. When this page is loading, when I'm hitting quick pick, it's pulling all of that information in, right? So now we're waiting, you know, just how, how fast is my internet? Okay, so that could get in the way. All these factors, and, and then also the number of courses you're offering, those are all loading right away as the page loads. Deferred fill doesn't do that. It actually waits. So the idea is that, we, we land on quick pick, right? And all of these groups are closed. You can't see any of it, right? We just see the topics. If you were to turn deferred fill on, once I click on a group, that's when that information is loaded in. So it may still take a second. You may see it just be like loading, uh, but it's, it's a way to, to try to, honestly, it's a way to try to speed things up. So the page loads and I can start doing things and then it'll start pulling in course information. So, it's a pretty neat feature. It's a pretty simple thing to just turn on and off if you want to try it. If you want to test it, because test everything all the time, ever. Test it while registration's open. Test everything. It's the most important. Uh, so deferred fill is something you may want to try as well. Also, show consent form. How many of us have a waiver that we're, we're using with QuickPick? Show of hands. I know at least one, maybe more, right? You actually have to log in before I do it. All right, I'm not, Sharon, do you? Just see a couple of people here okay. who are using that. Cool. Um, so if you're using it, this is a setting that you would actually have turned on, but if you're not using it, if this isn't something you want, you can just change it to off and so then Folks can enroll and you don't have to worry about them being required to check boxes to say they understand the policies. You do also have some options on here, again, as far as changing text, discount messages, you know, if some if something's expired. So again, the same ideas with your ACE Web INI settings. You know, what, what are your preferences? How do you want some of these things to read? You can set a default course order. 
So mine is actually configured just to sort everything by course name, but in quick pick boxes, you can actually change that order if you wanted to for you know one or two groups if you needed it to be different. So these two files do work hand in hand. Questions? No? Okay. So again, once we've checked those, your quick pick box is settings, not ace web. Test everything once again. Let's make sure if you've turned on deferred fill, is it actually working? Did it break the system, right? Or had, did you turn on proxy? Yes or no? So then ACE web settings, let's talk about ACE web settings. And this is gonna be kind of fast. So, so what I will say before this is, not all of you have access to these ACE web settings uh, that I'm gonna talk about. And you may, not, you may have access to some, but not all of them because these really are at the, the full ACE website level and also at the server level, okay? Again, the debug flag, I keep talking about it. Better be really exciting when you tell us, Lindsay. Um, also, there are some files, your WW session and WW, WW request log. We want to consider the size of those and then something called COM instances, okay? These, again, these affect all of ACE web, not just quick pick. So there may be some trade off if you also have you know, regular ACE web running as well. Uh, but they're also good things to check anyway. And if you have heavy registration that's using quick pick, you probably have heavy registration that's using you know, normal full ACE web anyway. So these settings, debug flag, what this does is just like extended logging in the quick pick INI, logs all of the quick pick routines. The debug flag will determine what ACE web logs. So, you know, these are going to be things like log on routines, um, adding courses to your cart, uh, paying, whether an email is sent. So, we really do recommend bare minimum. And sometimes this can can sort of come back to haunt you if if you need to track something down and unfortunately you weren't logging it because you were trying to you know give give speed precedence over logging. Uh, but typically payment routines, right? Those are the other big deals. Somebody registers, oh, you know, the payment didn't come through, but now we have it from our, our payment processor. So what happened? Hey, Aceware technician, can you check our debug log and kind of help us figure it out? So changing that flag to log just payment routines is going to cut down on a lot of, of time that's being taken in the background. Uh, you can also add email routines. How do I know what this is, Lindsay? Well, there's this really cool website out there. I have to tell you, if you haven't been to it, let me, it's, it's, it's gonna you know, answer all the questions. It has the meaning of life and everything. And debug flag is over in the help guide. What, the help guide, it's the first tab in my browser. I tell everyone that and I promise it's the truth. So we recommend the table in general, but when you start getting a ton of registrations at one time, you can tamp it down. So you can set this one here that I'm highlighting, specify you know certain routines only. Notice that this one, this right here, table flags, pay serve, that will only log payment service routines. So if you have the ability to edit your own ACE web INI settings, this is certainly something that you can do. If you do not have that ability, then you will want to you know, get in touch with whoever does, you know, your, your server admin probably is, is who has access to that. And if there are questions, contact your ACEWARE technician, we can help walk everyone through it. The next one is WW session and WW request log. Uh, this, and this is really only for folks using the Visual Fox Pro version, not, not the SQL Server version. There are files that basically store every session, every hit to your website, every um, you know, request that's made on the site, every login, all of it. And these, these files can get very, very, very big. And when they are very, very, very big, they can slow your site down, but they will also, if they are massive, they will just cause your site to spin and nothing else will happen. So there's a way to rebuild them through the ACE web admin page. They can also just be removed right out of the ACE web folder on the server. This is something if, if you're worried about speed and we've done all of these other things, then we start worrying about the session and request log files. And you'll wanna work with your tech. You'll wanna work with your tech and your server admin just to make sure that that's really 
what we need to try next. And with that, there are also these COM instances. AceWeb, if you're running in what's what we call COM mode, which most if not all of you are, AceWeb is actually running in, in the background. It's like a little silent partner. It's just running as a service on the server. And your, your server's processor, depending on how many cores are there, you can actually run two instances of AceWeb per core. So get with your server admin, find out, and you know your tech, we can help you tell you, you know, all right, here's where you need to look to find out this information. Let's figure out how many instances of AceWeb you have running. Because if you only have like one or two running, your site will absolutely be slow. Because once a request comes in, one of those comm servers picks it up and starts doing the things, okay? And then another one is over here waiting and waiting and waiting, and we really want that to be picked up. So the more instances you can have running, the faster your site will be. So AceWeb, the big deals here are your debug flag, those session and request log files if you're using VFP, and how many instances of AceWeb are you running? So this was all, it all <laughs> felt very fast to go through all of this, um, checking your course information, your membership courses, regular courses, looking through quickpickboxes.txt, making sure that you have your membership courses available to display and for folks to enroll in, right? Making sure that you have the right membership requirements set in each of the group boxes. And then we, we need to look at our quick pick I and I settings, make sure extended logging is turned off when, when opening registration, you know, de determine whether you want to allow proxy registration. If you want to try that deferred fill again, it's a cool feature, but I recommend testing it before opening registration and, you know, assuming it'll work. Uh, making sure that your donation courses are there. If you have any new memberships that you've created, make sure you add those codes in the INI. AceWeb debug, files, instances, questions. And test everything. Test everything. Hey, hey, what do you think I should do before opening registration? I just, I have no idea what I should do. What, what should it be? <laughs> test, test everything. everything. Test it, definitely test it. Curious out there, show of hands if you have uh, testing protocols and procedures in place. Just curious. Looking, looking, looking. Lynn does. Uh, Lisa, good, good. Inch interested in sharing with everybody in chat kind of how you do that? Do you have like a testing checklist? Do you have students that do the testing? Is that internal? Just curious on kind of how you do that. Uh, Maxi shares there's not a real formal process, but they test uh, Ollie members, so they get real user feedback. So you use actually Ollie members to test things before you go live. Very good. Lynn, Lisa, tips on testing, how you do that? It's a secret. Okay, well, hey, top secret, you know. Top secret. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll I'll kind of walk you all through through what I do in testing. How about how about that? That's a great um, idea. Yeah. So <laughs> again, I, you know, my first test is just whatever. I will just come in here with a name record. I think I already have a membership. Let me close this. Okay. So again. On a name record, how do we find out if someone's a member? Well, the really cool thing is it'll tell you down here at the bottom in green, member. But what are they a member in? I don't know. If you check the demographics tab, there is that membership box, uh, memberships box toward the bottom right. So this tells me that this record for Lindsay Lieberman, I have an Ollie mem membership that ends August 15th, and I have an Ollie membership that expired on February 6th. So if I'm testing and I want to make sure that Ali memb is going to work. I will come in here and I will log in. First thing I see right off the bat is there's a problem with my registration to contact the office. Big surprise, Lindsay, you're causing problems. So here it is. Um, if you see this, it could be because you have one that expired, right? So you're getting a, a message. Uh, it could be if you have someone you know, if, if you've just added the code to your name, but maybe you're not enrolled in the course, the membership course, it could get a little wonky. So those are, you know, a few things to test. 
And I'm looking, all right, I've got, you know, Ollie membership, South Dakota. Hey, does South Dakota have quick pick? I think they might. And then you'll also notice down here an invalid course ID. That's going to show up if you have something in your quick pick boxes that isn't really a course in, in your system. So this one here, spring membership. Well, that's, that's not a thing. That's not here, so it's invalid, OK? So once I'm logged in and you know, I, I know that if I've got an expired membership or whatever, I can still come in here and enroll in these courses, no problem. Uh, you will notice messages every now and then like registration pending, contact our office. Well, Lindsay, you've done something here, probably haven't paid for the course. And so that's what's happening there. Also not open for registration, please check later. So when you're again, looking through your courses, verifying if they aren't set to Publish register. Maybe this one is set just to you know publish only. So why don't we 23Q active fee? Let's see what that is. It's active, but notice it's publish only, no register. So that's what's happening there. Okay. And one thing also, this here, this is an important one to see. And I should have just asked, I shouldn't have pointed it out. Notice this is the Pro Ace group, but I've got this Ollie membership course showing up here. Your memberships should be in the membership section only, okay? But in this case, 21 Ollie. I have that grouping code assigned to the membership course that should not be there, okay? Absolutely, create a grouping code for your memberships, but don't put that group on quick pick boxes as a course group, okay? Because then it's gonna show up in a weird place that is really not where we want that to be, okay? The other thing with this one, null, the dates are null. Why are they null? Also this one here, this is also, you know, you're looking at your courses and student manager and saying, I've put everything in correctly, but then we come out here and, and we discover that we really haven't, right? So FACE101C. And you will notice there is no date here. It's an independent study course. That's, we want open and hybrid. We, we, aren't dealing with anything else here. So probably what I wanna do in that situation is just remove the grouping code. Great, so now that won't show up anymore. And it shouldn't. And you'll notice even mine is a little slow cause I've you know got extended logging turned on and all of that, but. Okay, so yeah, that's still there cause I haven't removed the grouping code but the 101C is no longer there. So I would log in again as somebody who technically has a membership but you know, also I have one that expired and they're competing and it's no fun. So I'm gonna cancel and log off. Then I come back in as somebody who does not have a membership. So this is just a brand new person coming into the system. In this case, I'm pretty sure it's Penny. Let's find out. And a little slow, we wait for it. Okay, so welcome Penny. Penny's logged in. You will notice I do allow proxy registration, so there is an enroll someone else button. And then Penny with no memberships, all of these become options for her, okay? Pro Ace, I know that all of these should be available, right? Unless it's not open for registration uh, because Penny is not a member of anything right now. But again, that's a group where members, you, you don't need a membership. And let's just verify that, shall we? The one I believe we are, yep, no membership. Yeah, the, the other one is what we're using. Okay, so now you can actually go through, right? And I'm gonna select a membership, Ollie membership example. Oh, a coupon, I allowed a coupon. So let's test and see if that is actually working the way we expect it to. Ollie example. What's the code? Ali five makes sense. And I'm just gonna tab out. 
So at 25, that's five. We should see down here, coupon discounts are calculated at checkout. So what happens if I proceed? Oh, I have to signify the agreement, right? Because I have that turned on. So I have to check a box and then I can go. So we know that a brand new member coming through just a membership and adding that coupon, oh, the amount due is 20 bucks. It looks good, right? Everything looks good for a new member. This wasn't adding any courses though. So from here, I could change my selections. I could also clear all selections. Okay, I'm gonna clear everything, even the membership and wait for it to take me back. Okay, all right, maybe I wanna try South Dakota's membership and make sure that that is actually available. All right, well, I can't get in to this one. Members are, all right, I can't select that one. Well, what, okay, cool, I can select hybrid. But what if I was expecting to be able to enroll in courses in this art and culture group, but right now I can't, right? So, but I want to, and I should be able to with this South Dakota Spring membership, right? So what do I need to do? What, what should I do from there? Okay, check my quick pick boxes dot text and I should look for that art and culture group and figure out why, right? Okay, this is why. So art, art and culture, which PS, remember you can set these titles to whatever you want. They don't have to be the descriptions in student manager, but you will notice that the membership flag is Ali and 22 F term, but that South Dakota spring one, whoops. 32SD, Ali Mem is the code there. So I need to remember to go update the code here. Save it, refresh it, wait for it to load. Any questions while we're uh, doing that? No. No, okay. And there it is. Now I can select a course here. So those are the kinds of things we, we want to be looking for. Okay, you'll notice I select one, they all go away. Okay, cool, that looks good. And this is you know exactly how I would walk through the rest of it. I would uh, also try again as you know an expired member. That might be Lucy, let's find out. Get real creative. How many of you have created name records for your pets? in student manager so that you can test all of this, should see all hands, unless you don't have a pet, in which case I strongly recommend a cat. So that's how we would test these things, right? Uh, right? And then later you can delete the name, you could create multiple records for yourself. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that. All right, I'm gonna remove this one. Now I only have Ollie on here and it expired in February, right? So I'm gonna cancel and log off and go back in as an expired member just so I can test. What happens if I'm expired? Is it gonna let me do anything at all? Is it going to allow me to enroll in, you know, just courses that don't require memberships, which is what it should do? Let's see what we get. That's telling me there's a problem. But I should still be able, yep, I can still select these courses. I should not be able, yep. I've reached the course limit and also apparently I'm already enrolled in something. So that's a cool thing to see. You have reached the course limit. You are limited to a maximum. So if you, again, if you want to limit people, if you have a group with 15 courses in it, but you know, they can only take three of those 15, you can set that limit and it will tell you when you've hit it. Okay, so this, this is the sort of testing I'm talking about coming in as a member, as a non-member, expired member, uh, and just running it, you know, putting it through its paces. Questions? No, looking good. Chuck getting Bandit some comments. <laughs> getting comments on who they have in the system to test with. Stein, yeah. I see you're on with us and your oh, hand hey. is up. Did you have something you wanted to share or were you saying you have a testing process in place? No, I did. I was, a uh, just harking back to. Uh, Lindsay talking about uh, access to some of the uh, setup options, configuration options, the I and I file, some of those things she's right. You would definitely probably need to pull in your network admins or somebody on your staff to, to get at the uh, uh, things like the com 
uh, number of comm sessions. But the INI file, everybody uh, who's a staff member with sufficient access should mm -hmm. be able to get into the INI editor uh, on ACE Web. Yes. And, and so you can change like the uh, uh, debug flag settings and so forth. So, you know, with, with your student manager user ID, you can get in. Um, so that one you shouldn't need to, you should have, you sh should have somebody in your department who, uh, uh, who has that access. You, you yes. Need, and and uh, so, yeah, you should be able to do that. That's yeah, a good very one. Good. Yeah. There was a um, question, Lindsay, about how to mm -hmm. access that. So you might want to walk through it. They would have to have the right permission. So yes. you might want to walk through how they get to that. And if they don't have it, what to do to receive that access. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So there are there are a couple things here. One is an AceWeb admin page. That's your AceWeb URL, followed by WConnect admin, awadmin.aspx. You may not have access to this page. Uh, it may have, you know, you may need to log in with your school's credentials or not at all. The AceWeb INI settings, there is actually a link, a URL that will go directly to that. Okay. And that will bring you into your INI settings. Again, though, just because you can access it doesn't mean you should or doesn't mean you should change it without, you know, full con you know, conversation with other folks in the office uh, so that you, you know what's being changed because this does affect everyone. Uh, but this is, you know, the INI editor is, is where you could go with your student manager credentials if you have the right ACE web access set up in that account where you can come in and change these. Uh, for some of you, you may have on this INI setting page, your quick pick INI as one of the options to edit. If you do, you can go in here and make the changes you need to make. You could also just copy this link to come back you know, to it at a future date. Uh, others of you may be using the template manager, which actually tends to be how I suggest doing it, because uh, sometimes we forget about all these other great places you can do it. But your template manager, you can actually come in here to get to things like your quick pick dot INI as well. All right, so there we can come in and modify it this way. So these are things that you you should have access to if you have the right ACE web permissions in student manager. And if you are the quick pick person, then you absolutely need to have access to either your template manager or that INI editor page. Otherwise, your server admin is going to love you because you're going to keep making changes and sending them a new file to replace what's there. Nobody wants to have to do that. So you can get to it through the admin page, through the INI editor, or your template manager. Clear as mud, right? Maybe like a mud puddle, slightly opaque. <laughs> Very good. Well, they know who to go to if they, hey, I learned about this and I would like to find that. Can you walk me through it? Your tech is glad to do that. So, yes. Very good. If you if you don't have those links on the INI editor to your quick pick, uh, get with your tech and they'll show yes. you how to get them on there. <clears throat> Absolutely. Other questions? No, yeah, very good. Um, I'm not seeing questions, but that's not to mean they won't come up later. And you certainly know how to find your tech and, and ask those questions. They'll be glad to help you as you get in here and work more with Quick Pick and things yeah. come up. You know, to you can get back to this uh, recording or you can check in with your tech. So no problems there. Nice yeah. session, Lindsay. Good job. Yeah, lots thank of you. great information. I learned a lot today too. So cool. we appreciate everyone spending time with us today. And so we will let you go and have an awesome upcoming weekend. And we will see you soon at another ACEWARE event. Have a great afternoon, right. everyone. Take care. Bye. Everyone. Thanks. Bye.